Good morning, everybody. 7.36 a.m. my time. I've been on a while. <laughs> uh, hit the like button if you like. And please subscribe, and it does help the channels when you uh, subscribe to them. And uh, so this one here is got a big boom. B-O-O-M. And it says, watch Ron DeSantis make a huge prediction that could change America forever. I just hope it's for the better. Conservative Governor Ron DeSantis is so confident that the red wave will come. He just dropped a shocking prediction. It leaves conservatives cheering. The next couple weeks are crucial for voters, and it seems that America First is gaining momentum. That sounds good to me. According to a report by the Daily Wire, Ron DeSantis of Florida believes that the Republican Party will win several high-file races across the country in the next couple of weeks. He cited the red wave as the reason why Congressman Lee Zeldin of New York would be the next governor of New York. DeSantis made the prediction after Lee Zeldin, who is running for Congress in New York, attacked Kathy Hochul during a debate. According to Zeldin, New York should be able to be safer. Various issues should be addressed, such as immigration and crime. The Democrats have failed America. The only way to stop the decline of the country is by voting red in November. Joe Biden has let down the people of America, and it's time for a change. The Republicans are expected to win big in the next couple of weeks, and it is predicted that the country will be swept by the red wave. Hopefully, it will be for the good. Yeah. Alrighty, here we go again. I hope everybody will have a good day today. It is pouring rain here in Iowa. We are getting smacked. <laughs> Derounded. <laughs> but um, as long as it's not snow and ice, I'm still happy. <laughs> well this one here I'm not too sure about um, <coughs> excuse me Trump breaks silence on Pelosi now when I overread this a couple times I still had some questions I don't know maybe I just wasn't letting it soak in good enough but former President Trump on Sunday called the attack on Paul Pelosi, husband of Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat of California, a terrible thing. He also used it to highlight his opinion in, on crime in Democrat-led cities. That I agree with. You know, and I'm so happy that Mr. Pelosi is going to recover. That was scary. Very scary. It could have been a lot worse. Jesus was looking out for him. In an interview with Americano Media, Trump said that what happened to Pelosi was a terrible thing. He also continued, continued to say that the overall situation of what is happening in San Francisco, even Chicago, was horrible. He even said it was worse than Afghanistan. I mean, the towns, the cities, the states, all over. It's like... I don't know. Crime can't be stopped. It's gone too far. So where does that leave us? What can we do about it now? Should have been done a long time ago. Just like the border. The border should have never been left open. You know? And I know that a lot of the law enforcement, maybe FBI, whatever, CIA, whatever, you know, when the drugs started to get so thick, they probably tried their best to get ahead of it. But stuff like that, it's, it's just like the flu. You know? It keeps going and going and going and going. And it's hard to catch up to. You know? He then continued to say that the police needed to be empowered and given back their dignity. Amen. As they are the only ones that can help control violence solve the problem. He added that currently the 
country is out of control. That is so true. Throughout the weekend, Trump has not spoken up regarding the attack on Paul Pelosi after a man entered the San Francisco home of the Speaker. Others in the GOP have had mixed messages regarding the event. However, Democrats, including President Biden, have encouraged people on both parties to condemn this sort of political violence, which has been on the rise for the past few years. <clears throat> There's one right there. I agree with part of it, but it, the crime seems to have gotten worse over the past two years. Am I wrong? Leave me a comment. I appreciate them. Because I can be wrong. Early on Friday morning, an intruder entered Pelosi's household and kept shouting, Where is Nancy? Where is Nancy? And after a small altercation with Paul Pelosi, who was trying to stop him from welding a hammer, the intruder gained control of the weapon and attacked Paul Pelosi. He had a brain concussion. You know, they had to do surgery on him. Oh, boy. The 82-year-old ended up in the hospital where he had to undergo surgery due to the skull fracture. He's expected to make a full recovery. Thank God for that. Speaker Pelosi has not been in San Francisco at the time of the incident. No, she wasn't there. And you know, she's got tons of security around her. I wonder just how much security does Mr. Pelosi have when he's home alone? That he could break in, that guy broke in, I don't know, with sliding glass doors or, or the back door? I don't know. But uh, there should have been an alert when he entered the premises. To me, but that's just me. <clears throat> now these are very short videos here. Uh, or articles, I mean. So I'm going to go on. Um, this one here, I will, I held off on this one for months. Well, not months, because this is only <laughs> beginning my third month. But a month ago, I held off on this. Yes, I did. And um, I really am kind of mistrewed, I guess would be the word, about it. But Carrie Lake, staffer, indicted for drug sales and murder plans. Now, how old she was when this happened, and I said this in another video of mine, um, I don't have any idea. And the group that she got maybe messed up with, evidently, as, as being very young, put her in this situation. Now, I don't know, but a staffer hired by the campaign for Arizona Republican gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake once admitted to participating in a murder-for-hire plot against the FBI informant involved in a heroin, heroin distribution case, according to a recent report at Raw Story, R-A-W Story. Now, I don't know, that must be a news place. I didn't look that up, I probably should have. Hope this ain't copyrighted, but I don't think it is because public news is all over. Uh, Kenneth Ulaberry was hired by the Lake Campaign sometime over the summer to oversee Latino engagement. However, while the Lake Campaign has confirmed he was hired, it is not clear if the campaign was aware of U.L. Barry's criminal past at the time they brought him on board. Now, Eula Barry was charged by the Justice Department in 2014 for allegedly attempting to murder an FBI confidential informant to prevent the inf informant from testifying, the informant from testifying at a trial involving Eula Barry and several others on money laundering and cocaine distribution. Eula Berry was also charged with heroin distribution. Now, in his plea agreement, Eula Berry admitted to telling one confidential source 
that he and some others would be hiring a hitman to kill another source, but said the threat was false and that he only made it for money. So he got paid to make that statement. <laughs> they can keep the money. <laughs> I don't know about you all, but they can keep that money. <laughs> Ultimately, Alderberry pleaded guilty to obstruction of justice, heroin distribution, and was sentenced to time served and three years of supervised release. Raw Story also reported that Eula Berry has a long criminal history. In 2006, he was charged in a drug case in New Mexico. In 2014, he was charged with a DUI. And in 2002, he was sentenced to six years on multiple charges involving vehicle theft and a criminal damage. Three years ago, Eula Berry pleaded guilty battery on a peace officer related to a 2014 incident. Carrie Lake had been consistently polling ahead of her Democrat challenger, Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs. With Hobbs flatly refusing to debate Lake, it is unsurprisingly that the corporate news media is using the final weeks before the election to drag Lake down in the polls with stories like these. Well, that, you know, that can really hurt putting out stories like this on a person that is trying to, you know, get votes for whatever she's going after. And uh, she's older now. She's more mature. And she's probably, you know, will carry this for the rest of her life. What was almost done. So she's paid. Kind of like in my book, but the truth is, Katie Hobbs is a dreadful candidate, and the only hope she has of winning is to rely on news media to drag her opponent through the mud. I tell you, you know, when we grow up, <laughs> we always have dreams, you know. What do we want to be when we grow up, you know? Well, after all these articles over just the past two months, going into three now, I've read, uh, being in the White House is not one of mine. <laughs> no. You know, you used to think when you were young, yes, I want to go to Congress and I want to make decision over all the people in the world and this and that and every other little, little thing, you know. No. No. The things I have read just irritates me. It really does. And it upsets me. As you all know, I do get upset. And uh, as far as being into politics and stuff like this, I like reading the items, the, the, the stories, you know, the newspaper articles, whatever. I enjoy reading those. But for me to actually be a part in that White House, with all these backstabbers and not respecting either side. You know, sometimes Republicans will turn on Republicans. Democrats will turn on Democrats and then, bing, they're all fighting. Democrats and Republicans, they're all fighting. This and that. They can't get along. You know, I can remember, uh, I don't know if they still go by it, whatever, these little cartoons that these cartoon makers would make. And one was uh, donkey. There's another word for it, but I won't use it, you know. And uh, in other words, calling that section in the White House a bunch of donkeys, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> I just don't think that would be my... Uh, uh, my cup of tea. No, I don't think so. I don't know. You let me know what you think. Would you like to be in the White House? Would you like to be a politician? Would and you know? Let me know how you would do this. You know? Okay. Well, I'm going to uh, stop for now. 
because I'm running low on articles. So I got to go build up my stash again on my desktop. And uh, I will probably be back a little bit later. And um, have a great day. You know, be thankful for what you do have. And pray that God will wake up some of these people in the White House and give us some financial aid. We get plenty of EBT stamps. You know, we get plenty of food, and that's awesome. Thank God for that. Very thankful for that. But, you know, I am i can't pay my rent. I'm not on HUD. No, I tried HUD. No, I just pay all my own bills. My rent, my lights, my utilities, water, garbage, whatever, recycling, you know. And the price has gone up on our medium-sized town ridiculously high. Yeah, every time I get my water bill, I just shudder. And I live alone. And I do laundry once every two weeks. That's all I've got to do it. I don't uh, leave my home. It's hard for me to get around uh, due to arthritis and every bone in my body, just about, and uh, my hypothyroidism. And um, it's just hard for me to get out and go to town, go to the stores and do some shopping. And um, I just can't do that. So, you know, I take a shower every day. Sometimes I take it at night, sometimes I take it in the morning, sometimes I take it after I do the videos, you know, when I'm wide awake and excited. <laughs> and, uh, but the water bill is just outrageous. They've got everything on it now. They've got the garbage on it. They've got the recycling on it. They've got how many gallons you use. If you don't use a thousand gallons, what is that, a thousand gallons a month or something like that, you get... A penalty for that it'll go up one month and then the next month it, it comes down a few dollars never have figured that one out you know especially when when I didn't fill up my I have a huge washer yes it's a very heavy duty um, washer and um, when I do washing and usually I do three to four loads because I've got doggy blankets to do for the pets and kitty blankets I have all their beddings to do and then plus my bedding plus my clothes plus my dish towels and bath towels and all that good stuff it might go up a little bit but almost ninety dollars for this medium-sized town that we live in and then the garbage has gone up everything has gone up it's so high that people can't even hardly get by we need financial help, and I've said that in another video. But I guess Biden just thought that billions and billions and billions of dollars should just be spread all over the place. And to heck with the people of the United States of America. And then you got to apply. If something does come up in your state, and the state's got all that money, our state has never offered us a stimulus check. $500, $750, $1,000, $1,500, no. And I can remember, trust me, when this come out, that the states were going to be receiving all that money, Iowa made a statement, well, we're not going to be in a hurry to dole out this money. They never have. I have no idea what, what they use the money for. And now... Um, what are they going to do? Wait till the last minute before they have to send what they've got left back to the government? Before maybe they'll help the people here in Iowa? You know, you got questions. And you try to get some information off the internet about Iowa stimulus checks? I don't get nothing. No, I get years back information. That's not doing us people any good here in Iowa now. 2002 and 2018 and 2017 and 16. 
That's not helping us any now. We need financial help now. Like so many other states, people in other states. Now, I'll tell you, I'm proud of those states. California, Arizona, of course, they're bigger states. But they have helped their people. You know, just one right after another, they have helped their people survive. <sighs> oh, sometimes you just let it go. Who cares? Bad attitude. But hey, we're down. Yeah, we're down. God bless you. And you are a blessing. Find my little button here. You have a wonderful blessing day. And yes, we count our blessings that we do have. Yes, amen to that. Laters.